What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video here on Live and Crowd. Can you sit? Can you sit your butt down for a minute? He sees a camera coming and he goes nuts. And then he sees this thing, watch this. I don't even have to use it. There, sit. Sit. Barely. Yeah, I didn't have to say it. Stay. You're gonna stay right there. Stay right there, buddy. Don't even have to use this stuff. Guys, welcome back to another video here on Loud and Proud. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the new style uploads. I'm gonna try to actually upload Monday through Friday. I know, bud, you don't wanna sit there, but you have to. We're gonna try to upload Monday through Friday. That way I still have like, you know, Saturday and Sunday where I can focus on not video stuff as much and I can just focus on having downtime with the fam and other stuff that I'd like to do, um, whether it's go out of town, stuff like that. So anyways, hopefully you guys understand that. We're gonna be doing a couple things today. One thing in particular I was hoping to do today, we're gonna have to wait until for you guys it'll be Tuesday, but we're gonna have to wait until then to get this situated. I'll catch you outside and tell you what I'm talking about. Okay, so what I was actually gonna talk about is the fact that we're getting new tires for the Hellcat. Why are we getting new tires? Um, well, because they're bald. <laughs> uh, they weren't actually that bad, but then when I went to the Whistling Diesel meet, I did a few burnies and um, it got pretty nasty pretty quick. Actually, I didn't do a few, I did 10. So as you can imagine, the tires are pretty much shot on the rear end. The fronts aren't that bad, but I'm not going to be shipping the car off to somebody with bald tires or even half tread tires on this thing. So we're putting a Borean spanking new set on it that you guys will see tomorrow on Tuesday. And then, uh, yeah, it'll just help with your traction issues a little bit, uh, more than it is right now, because right now it's it's no good. We may or may not tinker around on this axle project for Reagan today, I'm not sure. I know that for sure she wants me to start ripping it apart though, because she wants to get this axle in great shape and all cleaned up and ready to go because she wants to throw it on Rosine. And I've never really showed you guys this. I don't, I don't think I have, but if you look at Rosine, and this is just something that we didn't even realize until we put a big set of aftermarket wheels and tires on it. But you you notice how the passenger side front wheel like tilts in real bad. Like let's get right up flush with the body and you can see, let's get, yeah, I'm trying to get the lighting here a little bit better. Yeah, lighting is really bad because the sun is just blasting right out in front of this camera. Um, yeah, right, right there. So. It's making an issue. But anyways, what I'm saying is the, the whole wheel is completely like tilted in about two inches more than it's supposed to be like it is on the other side. So what we're needing to do is swap out the front axle because the whole hub is bent. Here's where the actual issue lies. The actual hub itself right here is bent in like bent. And it's got new ball joints and all that stuff. It's not a ball joint issue. The hub is actually bent. We were actually at the mechanic shop when Reagan and I were dating. I had bought her a whole new set of ball joints and had them installed for her at the shop. And basically, I was like, you know, why is the front end still leaning in? And they were like, yeah, so get this. The truck was actually in a front end collision, passenger side impact, and your whole axle hub is bent. And she's like, I would recommend getting a new front axle that's you know, straight as an arrow, so to speak. Like it's just, it's a nice straight, good axle. Just cause she's like, this is just, you're just asking for a problem to happen, especially with giant aftermarket wheels. Asking for lugs to snap because of uneven weight applying to them and stuff like that. And it's just not gonna be cool. So that was unfortunate, but we do have the axle. It just needs all cleaned up and uh, it's gonna go on Rosine. And I actually forgot to tell you guys, you only have 48 hours left to enter to win this Hellcat plus $5,000 cash. So if you haven't done so yet, Last 48 hours to enter. Link is in the description below. It's pdapiroco.com and every $5 is 20 times the entries, but that's only for these last few days of the giveaway. And if you're somebody that entered to win the truck and you thought, well, I'm not gonna enter for the car because then that would disqualify me from the truck, that's not how it works. If you enter for the truck and the car, legitimately, you could legally get drawn for both and win both. It does not disqualify you from one or the other. If you enter for one or the other, you can totally enter for both legitimately. They're separate companies owned by me, but both separate companies so that we could do that for you guys to have two times the opportunity. Yeah, that's how that works. Gotta feed this horse and donkey over here. Talk about hay burners every day, every day. Here we go, every day. Yes, we have pasture for them to feed in. However, it's been so dry the last few weeks that we've had to be supplemental feeding them with hay, otherwise they'll just completely eat them down to the dirt. I know, bud, I know. I know. Need to cheer, because mama drove it yesterday and it's freaking, <laughs> who, all, who all has that, uh, that one lady in their life that always moves their chair super far forward? 
Oh man, the amount of times I've smashed my knees into this dash already is just crazy. So hopefully I can get a quick little video in here without waking up baby, but we are actually on our way to drop off Reagan's Duramax because she's gonna be paying our paint body guy Miguel to fix the rust that was on the truck. When you buy a truck up north, we just kind of have to like negotiate according to the fact that there might be rust on it so that we can get that fixed for you guys before you take ownership of the truck. But man, does that Duramax look good here? I gotta tell you, I'm like really liking her Duramax. Really digging that Duramax. Now I'm not gonna expose what our next giveaway truck is gonna be, but let's just say this. I really like in the Duramax. Day two of this vlog, got a bear all fed. He's a freaking pig, he eats it crazy. <laughs> Today we're just gonna be working on Reagan's axle. Her axle for her second gen. He eats faster like I'm gonna take his dog food. <laughs> Every time I walk past him, I'm like, dude, trust me, I don't want it. I'm gonna work over here and try to get this axle tore apart here just because if you look at where it's at right now, it's currently very well shaded, which is good because otherwise it's it's gonna be really hot today. In fact, they said that if you have animals, keep your animals indoors. Obviously, I'm not gonna put a horse in my house, okay? But we have a fan for them. They're like, if you're hot, they're hot. It's like, <laughs> I mean, I get it. I guess if you've got like little yuppie dogs and stuff, but like animals, like they're supposed to be outside, you know? Am I the only one that thinks that animals were developed to live outside and like they are made to adapt to the conditions. Am I the only one that believes that? As long as they have everything they need, like food and water and stuff like that, maybe that's just me. Right now we're gonna try to tear into this axle because at the moment it's kind of in the shade a little bit because of this big old tree right here. So I feel like I can work on this a little bit and not sweat like crazy, but if I wait another two hours, it's not gonna happen, it's gonna be Pain in the butt. We're gonna get to working on this right now and see how much progress we can get and I'll just throw on some time lapse and uh, see if we can't tear into it. A little bit of a predicament. First off, my air compressor isn't very big so it can't like put out a ton of torque, like a ton of power, like what I need for this. And on top of that, my barn, however they wired this thing up, they wired it up basically for like a couple little basic ceiling lights for the horses so they can go in there and take care of the horses. And like, that's it. Like my compressor keeps cutting out because there's not enough ampage in the barn to run a fan for the horses, a phone charger, lights, which aren't even LEDs or anything. They're, I mean, they're just basic barn lights. And a compressor, which is not that much. It's not pulling that much power, but yeah, so. My compressor keeps cutting out because it doesn't get enough power to fill it back up. It's just fun. I'm not getting very far, unfortunately. So here's what we're gonna be doing because I'm having a bunch of difficulties getting these bolts out. On this side, it took me about an hour just to get the top bolt there, bottom bolt there, and the strut slash shock tower right there. That's where I'm at so far. And it's just getting really, really tough because especially the ones closer down there to the main part of the axle, they're just seized up and like even though I got the nut off the back of that one, um, it does not want to come out. I've hit it with a sledgehammer. I mean, I've been trying to put the impact on it, nothing. It's just not moving, not turning, not budging. Those, uh, those horns are extremely annoying. Anyways, I've got a new persuasion device here. It's not a hammer because apparently that type of persuasion was not working. So we've got a Master Force uh, Sawzall and here's what I'm gonna do. What I'm thinking about doing is cutting the upper and lower control arms, just kind of like in the middle, straight down. We don't need them, she's got brand new ones. She really doesn't need anything other than the axle. That's it, all of her components are good except for the axle. So I'm not gonna just go cutting everything, but I'm gonna probably cut the upper and lower control arms and then try the impact and see if it works, it should, but just try to take out that cotter pin and then undo the nut there to release the linkage there, the steering, stabilization, all that stuff and just drop that and then roll everything else off of the axle and then we'll see what we're working with. But uh, that's kind of where I'm at right now because then at least if I can get it all off, then I can get in between here and just cut the bolts, you know what I'm saying, to get the upper and lower control arm bolts off and then that'll be good. And then we're gonna be good to go. So let's see if we can make this happen. Now this axle setup is not completely done. There's still some other little things that I gotta do like get these upper and lower control arms that are cut off out, but you guys get the idea. Here it is, the axle. We do need to 
have the coil trays replaced. You can see there's a couple little pinholes here and there throughout them. It's an eating away at them. That's probably the worst of it. Most of the stuff can be sanded down and refinished very easy and most of it's still really solid. But these coil trays are super thin and brittle as it is. And they're just, they're just prone to do this. This is the first thing to go on any of your Dodge axles is the coil trays like the first thing to rot out. So those are gonna have to get replaced. We're probably gonna see if Devin or if he has a friend that can basically cut and re-weld in the new ones that we're gonna be having shipped in here when she gets her new huge lift kit. So stay tuned for that. That's gonna be on her channel. Link is always in the description below. So here's where we are and here's the status of it. Hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed that. I did just flip this over by myself. It really was not that heavy, it really wasn't. But you guys know how I always tell you, and I stress to you, the Dodge frame, second gens mostly is what I'm talking about here. For whatever reason, the front portion of the frame, if you're crawling under your truck, always rots out. I don't know why. Even some of the trucks that I've looked at, I'm like, man, that thing is clean. This is always either rotted out or on its way out, and it's just like crazy to me. But um, for whatever reason, it, it, they always do that. Um, now, not all of them are. I'm, I'm not saying that if you have a rust-free truck that look on your truck it's going to be rotted because that's not necessarily true but i'm saying most of them especially up north for whatever reason this area just behind where your bumper mounts up always rotted out so in terms of that axle i'm going to be pressure washing it down for her cleaning up the trailer and getting all that mess off getting rid of that probably just gonna have somebody come pick it up for free if they want it it's just a bunch of stuff but i'm gonna find out what we do and don't need off it first coils and those shocks are actually in really good shape they're like newer shocks in totally great shape they're for a stock second gen if anybody wants them hit me up new shock slash strut towers as well those are in really great shape they got some surface rust but they can be sanded and repainted and they're completely good they're not they're not rotted away by any means just gonna need some uh some major pressure washing, sanding, repainting, and uh, it'll be good to go on Rosine. Waiting on some parts to arrive for the resto gen before we can continue on with that truck. What do you guys wanna see for interior? I looked at new Chevy seats, newer Dodge seats, newer Ford seats. I just don't think these are gonna really work that great, the old bench. I mean, it's really shot, and I know it's, it might look like it's just the foam, but really the mechanics of the driver's side seat is really just, they're, it's just gone. It, it really is bad. So what do you guys think we should do for new seats? Let me know down in the comment section below. And I want to share a little thought that I had with you guys here. And maybe it'll mean something to some of you. Maybe it won't mean anything. But it's just a little note that I've just been like feeling on my chest this morning while filming. And I thought I need to share this with you guys. And maybe some of you will think, man, that really spoke to me. And I needed to hear that. And maybe some of you are just going to be like, doesn't apply to me, whatever, which is totally fine. I keep hearing the words, you are not defeated. I don't know what that means to everybody, but I just want you to take note of that and just and hear them out, take them in and let me know if that means anything to you, you have not been defeated. Those are the words I'm hearing for some people out there that just need to hear it and maybe you're experiencing, you know, loss of a loved one, loss of a job, loss of finances in some way, loss of a relationship, I don't know. I mean, you're feeling like this is the end. I can't believe this. Why is this happening to me? And you just feel like, like you have been defeated. And I just feel like I'm supposed to let you guys know, somebody out there, um, that you have not been defeated. And there's still so much good in your life and so much that can happen. But uh, anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I'll catch you guys back up by the Hellcat. Just wanted to let you guys know that you were down to your last 48 hours to enter to win this 2018 SRT Hellcat plus $5,000 cash. Car's got less than 10,000 miles on it. Tons of warranty left. And I don't care if you keep it, you sell it to buy a truck because you're more into trucks or what you do with it, that's totally up to you. But this car is worth about $55,000 and it's coming with five grand. Think about what you could either do with the car, drive the car, enjoy it for a couple months, sell the car, do whatever you want with it. But the giveaway ends on July 22nd at 11.59 p.m. So don't waste any time. Link in the description, 20X entries to get that car plus five grand.